Hey guys, here's the whole topic summary for AQA Physics Electricity. Now this has so many practicals in, they are absolutely key and important. If you want to list all the core practicals for this and all the other ones, you can go over to my website, get my free revision guide, or you can get it on Amazon. You need to know all of these circuit symbols. I've made you handy flashcards for this, but here is a quick recap. This is a cell. This is a battery. You will notice that a battery is more than one cell put together. Here we have an ammeter, voltmeter, a lamp or a bulb, diode, an LED, light emitting diode, resistor, variable resistor, fuse, thermistor, LDR, light dependent resistor, close switch, open switch. Here we have a circuit in series where you can run your finger the whole way through from the battery to all the components. And here we have a series in parallel where it has like branches or ladders. You can't run your finger around everything without going over something twice. You'll notice here we have an ammeter that is in series and our voltmeter that has to be in parallel around the component. Charge is the value of electricity flowing through a circuit. Current is the flow of electrons. Potential difference is what pushes the current around. And resistance is anything that slows down the current. Charge equals current times time. Charge is measured in coulombs. Current is measured in amps. Time is measured in seconds. Potential difference equals current times resistance. Potential difference is measured in volts. Current is measured in amps. Resistance is measured in ohms. There are three current potential difference graphs you're expected to recognise and draw. Remember current here is measured in amps and potential difference is measured in volts. A resistor at a constant temperature, the current and potential difference are directly proportional to each other. For a filament bulb, we have our graph going through zero looking like this. This is because as the temperature increases, the resistance increases. And a diode will only let current flow in one direction. So the graph looks like this, the direction that it is pointing. A thermistor is used in stuff like your central heating and it's only going to let current flow at certain temperatures. For example, at a high temperature, our graph looks like this. Whereas at our low temperature, the graph is going to look much lower. So as the temperature changes, the resistance changes. For a light dependent resistor, whether the lights are on or off is going to depend on the quantity of lights. We can use this in street lights or security lighting. If we have a bright light, That's what our graph is going to look like. But then if the light dims, it is going to change. So the resistance flowing through the circuit changes with the amount of light. We can think of current as electrons moving around a circuit. And in a series circuit, they all move in the same way. They all move through the same path. 
So wherever we look in a serial circuit, the current is going to be the same. However, in a parallel circuit, the current that comes out of the battery, all of this is going to pass the first ammeter, move down here, and then when it gets to this point, it has two choices of where to go. It can go this way past this ammeter, or down here and this way past this ammeter. So the current gets split. Potential difference measured by a voltmeter. I'm going to measure the voltmeter around the battery, then a voltmeter around each of the bulbs. And you'll notice that the um, potential difference, the voltage at the battery, is split across the components. Whereas in a parallel circuit, the potential difference that we have here across the battery is the same as we have across each of the branches. Our circuits are getting quite complicated now and we're going to be looking at resistance. When we have resistors that are in series, the total resistance is just them added together. Whereas when we have resistors that are in parallel, the total resistance is 1 over resistance or resistance number one plus one over the resistance number resistance number two and so on. So current in a series circuit is going to be the same wherever you look at it but you have to add up the different potential differences to get the total potential difference and add up the different resistances to get the total resistance. On a parallel circuit, the current on each branch is going to be equal to the total current, but the potential difference on each branch is going to be the same. To find the total resistance, you need to do 1 over the resistance on each branch. Mains electricity in the UK is 230 volts and 50 hertz. Inside a plug socket we have a fuse which has a very small bit of wire going through it. We can see from the circuit symbol for a fuse, wire going all the way through. And this wire will melt if too much current goes through it, so that's a safety feature of the plug. We have the live wire, the earth wire, which is another safety feature of the plug. The neutral wire, the pins holding them down. The cable grip, another safety feature, making sure that um, the wire doesn't go anywhere. The cable, which is doubly encased in plastic. This is encased in plastic, then this is encased in plastic. Again, another safety feature of the plug and the plastic casing, another safety feature of the plug. Power is equal to potential difference times current. Power is measured in watts, that is a capital W. Potential difference is measured in V and current is measured in amps. Power is equal to the current squared times the resistance. Power is measured in watts, capital W. Current is measured in amps and resistance is measured in ohms. A lot of maths in this video, so here is a quick little duckling break to refresh us for a bit more revision. Energy is equal to power times time. Energy is measured in joules, that is capital J. Power is measured in watts with a capital W and time. Seconds with a lowercase s. Energy is equal to charge times potential difference. Energy is measured in joules. Charge is measured in coulombs. And potential difference is measured in volts. The national grid is how we get um, electricity from power stations to our houses. The uh, power stations generate the electricity and they move it to a step up transformer and then through a network of cables um, and pylons this gets moved across the country to a step down transformer and then into our houses. Step up and step down transformers are an important part of our national grid. They work by uh, having a varying number of coils on each side, depending whether it's a step up or a step down transformer. 
a step up transformer we turn the low voltage into a high voltage so that the um, uh, energy can move through a system electricity can move through a system with less energy loss making it more efficient whereas a step down transformer will take it from a high voltage into a low voltage so it's safe to be in our homes when we have static electricity, we have an object that isn't normally being charged becoming charged. That happens when two insulators rub together. This is caused by the movement of electrons from one thing to another thing. And you're going to get um, a shock when the charge is reset and um, when you touch something metal. If you have two charged objects coming together, they're going to repel each other. Alternatively, if you have a charged object um, and an object which has the opposite charge, they're going to attract each other.